So, um, so you just got in off the plane uh, last night from Hong hey. Kong. So thank you for being here. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. So it's just absolutely fascinating what you what you're working on. You're working with a stem cell tissue to create the chambers of heart, and so this this is world class, cutting edge technology. It seems like you're on the brink of transforming the way we care for the human heart. Does that does that summarize what you're doing? Well, that's basically uh, what we've been doing. Uh, myself and my laboratory have been working on in the past 15 years or so, specifically. So it's related to uh, stem cell technology, as you rightly pointed out. So basically, uh, just to summarize, to make the long story like really short, I know we've got only 10 minutes, is that if I am to take a single draw of as little as 2.5 moves of blood from you, and you come back to me, let's say, about 12, 16 weeks later, I can literally show you in front of you several jars of your own mini hearts that are genetically and immunologically identical to your own self. So you're taking the stem cell not from fetuses, but you're taking stem cell tissue from an individual patient and growing, growing the tissue from that patient's own stem cells. Uh, technically, that's not quite correct. Uh, so just like anything in the real world, in order for us to make organs, we have to have our starting material. So our, our, our starting raw material is basically, uh, so uh, let, let me back up a little bit. So stem cell is really just a collective term. So uh, there are basically billions uh, different types. So the one type that we are most interested in is that we consider as the king of all stem cells. I know some people might disagree, but that's what uh, some of my, many of my colleagues and I think uh, is the so-called uh, pluripotent stem cells. What, say that again? Pluripotent, meaning that um, pluri, like very po pluripotent, meaning that they have the capability of becoming basically all cell types of the body. And this is a very unique stem cell type that cannot be found in your body, mm. all right? So, but what we do is that we can, uh, based on this so-called reprogramming technology pioneered by the Nobel laureate, Shanai Yamanaka. So uh, basically we can convert uh, any uh, cell types of your body, like skin cells, as well as blood cells, into this stem cell king. Wow. And as such, this is our uh, starting raw material. So what we have done in the past 15 years is that we have developed a series of proprietary technologies uh, to instruct Number one, tell this stem cell type to become human heart cells as the fundamental building blocks. And once we have these building blocks, we can then assemble using different engineering approaches uh, to basically fabricate human heart patches, uh, bandages, if you will, you know, cardiac band-aid, if you can imagine. So once someone gets a heart attack, you put this band-aid, at least that's the idea, and therefore you stop the disease from progressing. And, uh, 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 and also, at the same time, we have also developed technologies for engineering these mini hearts. So for now, it's called, they're called mini hearts because they're only about the size of your thumb. So small in a sense compared to what you think of human hearts, but they are actually not that small because it's very similar physically to the size of, let's say, an adult mouse heart and also a baby or fetal human heart. So uh, we are in the process of uh, making... You hope, you hope that you can eventually grow those to be the size of a human heart? No, this is just a, a more like the question about scaling up. So I was just going to say we're in the process of making medium, large, and extra large, and the next generation is also going to be carrying blood vessels as well. So will they be able to replace chambers of the heart? Is that, is that realistic? Is that within our lifetime? Will we see that? Oh, that within, I think in the not too distant future, very foreseeable future, you're going to see uh, technologies for curing uh, a number of heart diseases. Uh, obviously, the time frame, you know, this is a relative term depending on what we're looking at and the specific conditions. But I'm an optimist. I think that uh, within a lifetime, we're going to see banks of bio-artificial organs uh, sitting in incubators right. ready for transplantation. Uh, but getting back to your question, yes, so this chamber or this mini heart, even the prototype, the first generation, mini heart 1.0, if you will, uh, is fully capable of ejecting blood, and you can make all sorts of measurements uh, that cardiologists routinely do in the clinic. You can do pressure volume, you can measure the hemodynamics, you can do measure the ECG, and things like that. And as I say, uh, it belongs to you. It can be personalized. It can be from you or from anybody in the audience, and they're completely immunocompatible and genetically identical to your own self. You did a lot of this uh, uh, research at the University of California at Davis, 
but then you moved to Hong Kong, uh, where you're currently conducting your research. Why did you move? Oh well, uh, that's uh, I uh, I was I was born in Hong Kong. I was educated in Hong Kong, and I left as a teenager. Uh, for Canada and for the U.S. to complete my education. Actually, I, uh, academically, I, st I, I spent a lot of time, most of my time at Johns Hopkins, where I got trained and started my career, and then I moved to California because of the uh, Proposition 71 Stem Cell Initiative. So uh, I've been developing a lot of the technologies in the U.S., but uh, about returning to Hong Kong, actually, I've been going back and forth between Hong Kong and the U.S. in the past uh, 15 years or so. And with the past five, six years or so, I've been primarily based in Hong Kong. So I, uh, long story short, uh, I think uh, at that part of the world, a lot of interesting things are going on, you know, in China, in Hong Kong, and in Asia in general. And uh, there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, there are e so with Novo Heart, how much money have you raised? And have you actually sold a, a, a finished product yet? Or are you still in the early that, trials? That's a very good question. So our technology is mature enough uh, for us to market. So uh, for now, we are aiming at, so there are at least two major directions or two major markets that we're looking at. The uh, uh, Number one is the truck discovery uh, area. So we are trying to help farmers, pharmaceutical companies, uh, to discover new drugs, and once we get positive, we want to be part of the process to help them uh, develop further into novel therapeutics. Uh, so that's one thing. And the second one, obviously, is what we already uh, spoke about, is the cell-based uh, 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 therapy. So, um, so these are two major areas that our company is targeting. So where are you in your fundraising, right? Oh, we are just like any other startup. We are uh, constantly in the process of uh, fundraising. So uh, we are in the process of completing our second round. And uh, we already uh, made a number of movements this year, like uh, we already started our first uh, R&D, in-house R&D project amounted to about four million US dollars. And we are in the process of uh, uh, in making more investments in our infrastructure so that uh, we can improve both our scientific as well as business capabilities. So is your money coming from American or Chinese or Hong Kong venture capitalists, angel investors? Where no, is money is money. We think globally. Uh -huh. We don't limit ourselves just to the city. <laughs> <laughs> and also, so as the technology that we are developing. Uh -huh. <laughs> So you're, so you're raising money all around the world? No, I, I would say uh, so far we've been, uh, actually in terms of fundraising specifically, so far we've been holding it pretty tight. So we, uh, we actually haven't really proactively gone out to fundraise because we trust that our technology uh, has this pool uh, factor. So we're focusing on uh, polishing our technology. But like I say, the technology is actually mature enough uh, for us to market. So uh, we're, we're trying to build a reputation. And uh, while I speak, uh, we are talking to several uh, groups. So, uh, so uh, obviously, we need the money, but we also want to add value. We're looking for uh, partners, not just investors, who can help us uh, develop the business uh, to grow further into, into so something. So for distribution channels, uh, right? Well, more than that, and right, you know, right. partners. It's, it's partners. And so, what is the environment in Hong Kong like for your research, vis-a-vis -vis California or Baltimore? Is do you have the rich mix of talents and skills there uh, that you would have in the United States? If you're asking about uh, the technical aspects, I, I think so far we've been fortunate enough to have attracted uh, a number of returnees. Uh, who have uh, spent considerable amount of time overseas, like uh, in the UK, in the US, uh, Canada, Australia, you name it. Uh, but for Hong Kong as an international city, actually, uh, we're just looking for talents, talent from anywhere, any nationality. It doesn't really matter. I mean, as far as you are equipped with the right skill sets, we want to work with you. And, uh, uh, and Hong Kong uh, also has this very, has been able to enjoy a very vibrant economy. And uh, there are also ingredients that uh, we are able to take advantage of, like uh, their very established legal, financial, economic systems. And importantly, it is part of China. It is in, it, it, it is in China. Right. Yeah. So lastly, uh, you mentioned before that you're working on a venture capital fund to, to help people, investors, find opportunities in biotechnology mm -hmm. in, in Asia. 
in Asia. So, so you, tell me, tell us about that. You're you're looking for investors who want to make multiple plays in the region. I think uh, part of my life or the role that I want to play is to serve as a matchmaker, and there have been a lot of interest uh, eyeing on the emerging uh, Chinese as well as Asian market, um, and. At the same time, uh, there is also a lot of money uh, av available in, 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 in the region uh, looking for uh, opportunities uh, to n learn or acquire certain entrepreneurial as well as scientific techniques, uh, skills uh, that are available in the West. So I think Hong Kong uh, as a trading center uh, in the past 100 years or so, going forward, is going to be playing the same or very similar role in the development of science and technologies as well. So uh, uh, this venture fund that I was mentioning uh, to you before it came on stage uh, basically uh, as the idea of serving a very similar purpose. Mm. We well, are at a fascinating intersection of technology, money, and culture. So thank you very much for sharing thank you very much. your experiences with us. Thanks.